Hi, I'm Steve Boyles, OSU Extension Beef Specialist. One of the other things about low stress cattle handling is how many cattle do you want to line up? If you've ever stood in a long line, that can cause you stress and frustration. So what are we doing here at the crowd? If it's a relatively rapid procedure, think about feedlots. They're working calves and it could be a very rapid process. Maybe they're implanting or doing some minor, minor checks like that. They may well fill up a long single file alleyway and move cattle through rapidly. But what if you're maybe working by yourself and you're artificially inseminating cattle? How many animals do you perhaps want to be lined up? Three, four, you, you have to use your judgment. But that frustration, especially at that important time of trying to use artificial insemination can have an impact on conception rates. So think about how many cattle you want to line up. I also want to talk about cattle handling equipment. Now cattle, one of the things about cattle handling equipment, it's the human but also the animal, now cattle have fewer rods and cones in their eyes, so things are not quite as sharp. Think about an owl or a hawk. Their eyesight is superior to human eyesight. Well, <laughs> if you think about cattle, they have a herd mentality. Safety for them is in the group, not necessarily, they don't need necessarily sharp eye vision. So it could be maybe we're handling cattle, making ourselves look bigger, with a handling stick. Although with this, I would recommend a flag be on the end of it. It could be a paddle, something that they can see. This, even in rapid movement for a human, is kind of hard to see. So this needs perhaps something a little bit more obvious to, to use that to make the person bigger. Or if somebody wants to do this coming down a large pen, I would probably have something on the end of these. One of the things these are should not be used for, to strike the animal. That's going to cause fear the, few, the first time, you know, in the future, if you ever have to work these cattle again. That's also going to cause a bruise. And once cattle are bruised, it takes a long time for a bruise to disappear. And we're losing about $35 million a year over that to bruising here in the United States. So a bruise has to be cut out that is not sold in the grocery store. And I have to admit, I cannot use any sorts of cattle handling equipment. Not to say these, these can be very useful to people, but I recognize that my own self, I might be tempted to use that. Therefore, when I work cattle, I don't want to use this good hat, but when I work cattle, I've got an old kind of dirty ball cap. And if I'm tempted, tempted to hit the animal, I'm really doing no harm to the animal. So you have to think about your mentality, the people that are working for you, that are handling your cattle, their mentality, and make sure they understand these cattle are to be worked to your specifications. We want to briefly go over corral design and having a corral. The majority of accidents that happen with beef cattle is when we're in close contact with them. So we need to think about some sort of facility if we're going to practice different parts of beef quality assurance. So there are different parts of a corral. There's the, the holding area, there's some sorting pens, and then working up to a single file alley and probably a screen. So starting with that gathering or holding pen, out here, off, off to this way, there is a pen that's where the cattle can be brought in from the pasture. Notice the gate is in the corner there, so you've got two sides to have some control of those animals. I wouldn't want a gate to be, say, along the middle uh, with two different areas. If you think about a gate right here, and these are the fence, how many different ways can cattle go? Versus having it in that corner somewhat gives you an extra control of the animal. You will notice there's a water uh, trough right there. That's optional, although if you think about it, you're gonna hold cattle ever overnight, uh, that's a nice option to have, but mainly that is a holding pen for those cattle. Then you have to have an area where you get in there where you have to sort cattle. Now this facility is for a larger herd. You don't necessarily need this many pens, but you have to think about 
how many different ways do you want to sort cattle? Cows from calves, maybe heifers uh, as a group, maybe even bulls or something. How many different sorting areas do you need? So think about that before you work cattle. You don't want to have the calves and cows come up together and go through the single file alleyway. Also, uh, gate placement is important. These gates are designed so the cattle can go towards, go towards the, uh, the single file alleyway. Uh, we also have gates on the sides here to help control access to other areas. Yeah. In, in actuality, probably the perfect corral is nothing but gates, almost like a Rubik's Cube. But think about gate, gate placement. There's a reason to have this hinged over on this corner and perhaps over here. So think about the orientation of your gates within these sorting pens. After you've got the cow sorted, then bringing them out of this pen, and we're going to move into an, a, a crowding tub area. Now, there's different sorts of ways to do this. It can be somewhat circular. You can buy pre-manufactured circular crowding tubs. That's kind of a Temple Grandin design. That can work very well. However, there's also the bud box. And I will leave it to you if you want to look up bud box designs. There's some of that stuff in our BQA uh, presentations. But different ways to get the animals, bring them up to an area. This is a this just gradually, notice how we're gradually getting smaller, the holding areas, gradually bringing the cattle down to a smaller group. Eventually, these cattle would go down this single file alleyway, and there is light ahead of the cattle. So they're going to move more easily if there is light out towards the end of this chute. You, it's somewhat harder to move cattle down into a dark area. And finally, you come out over there at a squeeze chute where or some sort of restraining area for the animals. So in summary, for a corral, you need a method to bring cattle into your corral area, and I'm calling it some sort of holding pen that is adjacent to your pasture. Then you need a method to be able to sort cattle different ways, however you need to do it. Then you have a crowding tub area a crowding area. Once again, it can be different designs that are out there. There's no one design that fits all, but it's just a method to gradually bring down the cattle so that they can be brought into a single file alleyway. One of the other, one of the other things with cattle, uh, they will a lot of times notice things that we don't. One of the things is a change in surface. Within, we're inside this corral facility right now, and when we were bringing these cattle in, it was correctly pointed out, the cattle actually stopped right here. Here we have concrete that's grooved, and then here we have dirt. The animals stopped. Did they get terribly frightened? No, but they were concerned about how that change in, in texture was. Also, we have some shadowing here. And so we have to keep that in mind. Sometimes if there's a, a say there's a ditch this tall, they don't know it's this tall, or is it a you know mile down crevasse? So they may balk at that. So ideally, it's kind of checking your tractor before you go out to plant. Walk through your corral and see if there's anything there that may cause the animals to give pause or balk. One of the things with corrals and cattle, we need to think about lighting. Now in this particular corral, there are lighting for if we were working at nighttime, but that keeps a nice shade. You don't want light shining into the eyes, but overhead. Also, this is a rather open uh, corral facility meant to keep probably the humans dry, but it's open, there's, so there's a lot of light. Also, these animals are moving towards light over here at the squeeze chute. We're now in a one-way alley with the cattle lined up. We have some discussions, debates about solid sides versus open sides. They both work very well. Admittedly, if you have solid sides, it's probably ideal to have a catwalk for the humans uh, to work off of. But if you have just openings between uh, the chutes or uh, the fence, that works too. But keep in mind, we're still using point of balance and that flight zone to move those animals, so it can work very well. 
Now all the animals are past me up towards the squeeze chute. We still use the basic principle of, when possible, work from the front first. So this is not the ideal place to start moving these cattle. The cattle up front can't see me. They're being maybe a little bit crammed by the cattle behind them, but that is not, that is high stress handling on the cattle in the front. So then we want to work these cattle from the front and get them into the squeeze chute. Probably ground zero in beef quality assurance is how we're going to handle these cattle once they're restrained. So we've got to have some sort of facility to hold the animals. And growing up, we used to have, my father and I used to have a lasso in the bottom of a barn, and we'd dally those cows around the neck and push them up against a pole. That's probably not ideal for stress and bruising. So ideally, we'd have some sort of squeeze chute. Uh, one of the things nice about this design, and similar to the design over here, these bars go straight down. Sometimes, at least if you have a scissors type, make sure if the cow goes down, there's room so the animal doesn't have trouble breathing. Also, this one has a particular, you know, goes under the brisket area to hold that animal up. This doesn't, it's an older shoot. This can work, but uh, there's a reason for that. Uh, also, think about when you're going to apply this. Once an animal comes in here, you don't necessarily have to immediately bring it down on them. So you, you, you know, bring it down, make sure you get the head in there, and then we're thinking about, oh, I'm going to squeeze this animal. You may or may not need to put the squeeze on the animal. You may want to hold off, though. Once the animal's caught, many times they're going to step back. And then if you're going to apply injections, that's going to allow you more room uh, in that neck area to do that sort of work. So wait for the animal, perhaps step back, then apply the squeeze. The other thing about the squeeze, we only want it tight enough that they're immobilized. We don't want to cause stress <laughs> to the ribs and cause perhaps unnecessary bruising. So use your judgment on how much squeeze pressure you need on that animal to restrain them.